Well, today I'm getting to work on the, um, just a refresh of my torque tube itself. Uh, this is a, just a torque tube out of the 2001 Z06 Corvette. Uh, these things are a little bit different from 2001 and up. Um, uh, so that's the version I'm working on here. I've got a bearing kit that I ordered in from Tick Performance. Uh, so just three SKF bearings that'll go in. And then I've got my my aluminum couplers that are going to replace the rubber factory uh, Guiba bushings that are known to fail. Uh, there are a couple of schools of thought on this. Um, some folks are just diehard and they run aluminum front and rear to prevent failure. Some folks like to run one aluminum and one Guibo, um, and then others prefer to run like a poly or basically like a harder rubber or, or a plastic type of type of material. So I've been running um, these aluminum couplers. These, these uh, particular couplers are from Performance AFX. Um, I've been running these in my um, my other spec Corvette now uh, for three years without any problem at all. So really the only thing you need to make sure of is that um, when you put these couplers in that you check the run out on the input and output shaft of the torque tube uh, to ensure that you don't have much wobble in the shaft because if you do it'll just it'll shake everything apart <laughs> which is uh, which is no good. So if you do go aluminum just know that these things are not all created equal. Uh, you need to get something from a reputable shop, somebody that really knows what they're doing on a CNC machine to, um, uh, to make these things right. Uh, so Performance AFX is one of those that uh, does appear to make it right. I've, uh, they lined up very, very well on my other car. I expect that they're going to line up really well on this one too. So um, anyway, as I get to work on this guy, um, I'll be removing the old slave cylinder. I've got a new one uh, from Tick that I'm going to put on here along with the remote bleeder. Um, and then over here on the other side, um, getting this thing out, it shouldn't be too big of a deal, except that there's just a giant snap ring in there that's hard to get out with um, probably any traditional set of snap ring pliers that you've got on hand. Uh, so if you look over here, I've got a set of just very large snap ring pliers. These are Harbor Freight Specials, um, but it does the job and it gets that, uh, gets that snap ring out of there, no problem. Uh, so anyway, once I get that snap ring out, um, then I should be able to just hammer that guy right on out of there. I'll be able to get to the bearings and the couplers, no problem. So I'll check back in here uh, with some additional tips as we go. All right, I have the shaft out of the torque tube itself. Uh, this is the front, the input shaft, where uh, it has one bearing that is still in pretty good shape, but I'm going to replace it since I've got it out anyway. I've got the rubber guiba bushing or shaft coupler here that I'm going to uh, take apart and, and replace. And then in the back, we have another rubber coupler or Guiba bushing that will separate. And then this assembly on the back end has two bearings in it that also seem to be in good condition, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace them anyway since I'm in here. Um, and a couple of circlips that are holding that assembly together. So anyway, uh, I'm just gonna to start to break this thing down and uh, one by one work my way through these bits. Okay, pausing to note just a couple of things. Uh, first thing is, I uh, didn't mention this before, but before I took my uh, input shaft off of this guy, I went ahead and I marked both the shaft side and the input side right there with black marks, um, just to get it lined up so that it goes on the same way that it came off. I don't know that it's really gonna matter for balance, but I went ahead and did it anyway. Um, as far as getting these bolts out, they actually came out no big deal uh, with just a, a kind of a har cheap Harbor Freight impact with my T50 Torx bit. Uh, came out no problem without having to heat them. Of course, if you're having a hard time with yours, uh, you can see the thread lock there. You can just take a propane torch and heat the ends to burn off some of that thread locker. Um, in the back, I did the same thing just for good measure. So I've got my mark there and my mark there so that I can see where these are gonna line up. Um, now this assembly, I did take apart uh, before disassembling this just because it's hard to get to this side of the, of the bolts with my impact and torx bit with this assembly on. So I removed the, the snap rings. The big one actually holds the bearing in on the outside here. The small one goes on this output shaft right there and actually keeps this assembly um, on the shaft. So with those guys both removed, uh, I just took a little rubber mallet and, uh, and just hammered gently on the back of this thing, rotating it every couple of hits to, um, to just evenly move the thing off the end of the shaft, which it did. Uh, you can see it left behind 
this bearing here for good reason, because it's got its own little snap ring on the inside. And then of course there's another snap ring right here that holds uh, this, this guy in the right spot. So anyway, I'll get those couple of snap rings off of there and this should be able to press off, no problem. And now I've got easy access to my bolts to get this guy separated. All right, moving along here, I have gone ahead and pressed off the old bearings um, and pressed on new ones. There was really nothing of note there. Uh, I didn't need any special tools. I just used my standard Harbor Freight shop press uh, and an assortment of sockets to make sure that I got all my pressure perfectly aligned in the right spots and everything went in straight. So um, basically just you know removed my, um, my snap rings pressed those guys off, pressed them back in. The, um, the bearings that go back here on both the shaft and this hub assembly are the bigger bearings in the set. So if you, or if you order a kit, you're gonna have a smaller one that goes in the front and two bigger ones that go back here in this hub assembly. So that's real straightforward. Um, up here in the front, there's um, obviously the smaller bearing and something that did not come in my kit from Tick that you need to get. So I ha actually had to pause and order this separately. I don't have it yet. It's this thing called a slinger. Um, it's a relatively inexpensive part. It's, you know, like 13 bucks from the dealer or seven bucks online, but the shipping ended up costing more than the part. So I ended up just ordering one from the dealer. They should have it for me in a couple of days. Uh, but I'm, I have to pause until I can get this replacement slinger because in order to um, get this thing off, I actually had to kind of destroy it uh, by, by sticking a screwdriver in between it and the bearing uh, to get it to come off. I was hoping that I'd be able to actually press the bearing and the slinger off at the same time, but that's actually not possible because of the snap ring down here holding the bearing in. So in order to access the snap ring, you have to get the slinger off. Um, so just make sure that whatever kit you order not only comes with the bearings, but comes with the replacement slinger as well. So once I get that, I will press this thing back together and then I'll be able to start my assembly and, uh, and check the run out on the input and output shafts just to make sure that I've got my, um, my aluminum couplers uh, in there properly. So that's it for now. All right, I've got everything at least mocked back together right now, right? So my, my slinger arrived, I've got that press back on, new bearings, I've got my aluminum couplers in place uh, front and back. I'm just gonna reassemble that back hub and then slide everything back into the torque tube and just check for um, run out or wobble on the, um, on the input shaft here so that I don't destroy a pilot bearing. Ideally, it's going to be less than one one thousandth of an inch. Uh, so we'll put this thing back together and see uh, how well it came out just straight out of the box. Okay, I've got my um, my shaft assembly back inside of the torque tube. I've uh, I've got a little dial indicator set up here so that I can check my run out. And right off the bat, it's looking pretty good. Uh, so if you watch the dial, uh, you can see where I've got it placed here on the input shaft. I'm just going to rotate this gently and. We can see it's going to give me a little bit of a swing, which ends up being about two and a half thousandths, which is super close. So I'm going to pull this back apart. I'm going to clock it and see if I can get it down to, um, well, the smallest number I can possibly get it to, ideally down to around a thousandth. Um, although this is pretty darn close already. So I will uh, pull this, try clocking the thing just a hair and see what we come out with. Just checking back in after moving through the um, all the various orientations. Uh, the best one I could find was actually one and a half thousandths. Uh, so that should be close enough uh, to keep enough wobble out of this guy from uh, you know, keep it from destroying pilot bearings. But essentially what I was doing just to kind of explain is I would, uh, every time I'd measure, I would put the drive shaft assembly back inside of the torque tube so that the bearings were roughly in place. I didn't bother with the snap rings or anything like that because there was enough pressure to just hold them. And then I would rotate the shaft with the dial indicator on there, as you could see earlier, uh, and, and it would give me an idea how much wobble I had. Now, every time I would take it out, then I would disassemble this entire thing and I would rotate the coupler one hole over and I would put the input shaft back on with the drive shaft in the same orientation, right? So that line was always lined up with this line down here. It was just the coupler that was moving. But you can see the difference, right? So I had one and a half right here. I had 11 there, four, one thousandths, seven on that one, three, 
eight, and then back to my one and a half right there in that orientation. So um, so that's how that came together uh, in the back. I measured it just one time. Uh, it was near perfect. It was like half a thousandth of an inch. So, um, so that one I just left alone. Everything now at this point is torqued back down to 66 foot pounds. I've got a little bit of red Loctite on there to keep these things from backing out because I just do not want that to come undone at all inside the torque tube. And then uh, this guy is just, it's ready to go back in. So uh, this will go back in the torque tube. I'll get my big snap ring in place and uh, this thing will be ready for service.